We're going to be looking at section 3.2 and in this section we are going to be looking at more truth tables and we're also going to be looking at something called the conditional and I'm really going to try to emphasize several different ways where I have utilized these things in different ministry projects so I'm hoping that you'll see a little bit of application in this particular section. We're going to start right off the bat, really just following up from the last section that we did. And I know this looks like a really ugly problem and we don't usually start out with ugly problems. We usually start out pretty easy and work our way in. But this is a continuation from the previous section. So this is just continuing the ugliness, but it's necessary. So I'm sorry. But here we go. So we're going to be doing some more complicated truth tables um, and then it'll, it'll just go on from there. But let's take a look at this problem. So this problem is multi steps and I want to show you how we're going to use this truth table to complete this multi step problem. So here is the problem. They basically, you'll have several of these where um, in your homework, you'll just have to construct a, a ginormous truth table. And it's gonna look something like this that you see on the screen, okay? So something like this. And you're just gonna have to put all of the trues and falses in here. And you just have to kind of take your time and be ready. And so my suggestion to you is have your truth tables. This is the AND chart and this is the OR chart. Just have them handy and keep them as references. So you're going to see how I kind of walk through the logic process in my head as I am completing the truth table. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I always start with P's and Q's. And notice your P's and Q's are always the same for every single truth table. So I just go ahead and fill those in. So the P's and the Q's, they're the same. Um, for P, it's true, true, false, false. Q is true, false, true, false. So that's the same every time, okay? Then I'm gonna go straight for this column. I'm gonna go straight to my AND chart and I'm just going to copy this column down. So, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to start and work my way across this problem, all the way across. So the first thing is I wanna know what is P and Q because it's in parentheses. So I'm gonna do that in this column and then I'm going to take the not version of it right here. So P and Q, I'm just gonna to go to my chart and I'm just going to take this last column and I'm going to put it right from my chart and put it down. So there you have it. Remember that for P and Q, it's only true when P and Q is true. Everything else is false. So I just copied it straight from my chart. Now, for the next column, when it says not P and Q, all you have to do is take the opposite of everything in this column. So if it's true, then you're gonna write a false. If it's false, you're gonna write a true. So that's pretty easy. Okay, so to get this column, we just take the opposite. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so far not so bad. And we, whenever you look at this, we have gotten our not P and Q. So that's all of this. Now we have to, we're gonna do and, but we've got this big set of parentheses. So now we have to kind of start working inside of this parentheses. So the first thing we have to do is P or Q. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to my P or Q chart because that's easy. That is just simply going and copying down this column, P or Q. That's just this from this chart. So just go over to your P or Q chart and I'm just gonna copy this whole column down, P or Q. Remember that P or Q is only false when everything is false, every time else it's true. So just copy those purple letters down into this column, 
Okay, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so that is now P or Q. Okay, now here's where it starts to get a little bit more. So now I'm supposed to take the values in here, which is what P or Q is, so these trues and falses, and I'm supposed to and them with whatever is in Q. Okay, now this is where my brain, I have to see these letters side by side. And I have to have them on the left and the right in the right order. And some people are able to do this by just saying, okay, this is going to be my left letter. And then they're going to go over here and they're going to say, this is going to be my right letter. And then they're going to be able to say, I'm going to go to this chart and I'm going to say a truth and a truth. I'm going to go to this. And so that's going to give me a truth. That's a lot of steps and my brain cannot work like that. So here's what I do. I go and I say, I'm, my next step is that I am going to take this column because that's P and Q or P or Q. Okay, that's these purple letters. And then I'm going to be combining them with just the letters from the Q column. Okay, that's this column right here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write the letters from that Q column pretty small, and I'm going to bring them over here and write them next to this. And that way my brain doesn't have to work so hard. Okay, so watch this. I'm just gonna write them small. Okay, so all that I did was I took these letters, true, false, true, false, okay? So now these letters are written right next to them. So what I can do now is this is from the last um, section when we actually went and used these truth tables. So now what I have to do is I have to go to, I'm using this and chart, okay? So I'm using this chart. And when I use this chart, remember what's significant about an and chart. An and chart is only true when both of the values are true, okay? Every time else it's false. So I'm gonna look through here and I'm gonna look for any time that it's true. Well, it's true here. So this is gonna be true and this is gonna be true. So that's true. And then this one right here is true. The rest of them are gonna be false. So that's how my brain does this. So I try to, I try to remember you know, I go through here and you can do this one by one. You can just say, okay, true and true, true and true is true, true and false, true and false is false, true and true, true and true is true, false and false, false and false is false. That's why you have the chart, you know, you have that handy, okay? So now, now we are, almost there okay we're almost there so the next step is that we have to so look what we have to do next okay so here now we have we have all of this p or q and q all right that's everything right here so that's going to be my right side of this and okay what is my left side? My left side is this not P and Q. Now, where is that? Okay, that is this blue thing. We already found it earlier. So that's gonna be the left side of my and. So here's my right side and here's my left side. Remember, my brain can't have them separated. I need them right next to each other. So what am I gonna do? 
I'm going to write these blue things small right next to here. Okay, that just helps my brain. So I'm going to just write them small right there on the left side. So now I know that I am joining these and how am I joining them? I'm joining them with an and. So I'm gonna use this chart. I'm going to look and in my mind, I'm going to look and I'm going to see, hmm, are there any true trues? Because that's the only one that's gonna be true. So yes, there was one true true. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark it true and then everything else is gonna be false. Everything else is false. Okay, so that's how I work through this truth table. And I hope that that helps you kind of know, and you might need to replay this again to help you kind of work through some of these truth tables so that you can see kind of the questions that I ask myself. I do a lot of talking to myself. So um, when I'm working through these problems, but you need to be really careful and because if you make a mistake, the bad thing about this is if you make a mistake way over here, oftentimes it'll throw off the rest of your truth table. So just be real careful with that. Um, you want to double check each column when you're doing it. So before you don't rush through these, just make sure as you're working through them that you're double checking them. Now we're gonna introduce what is called the conditional statement. So you have a definition here. The statement if P then Q is called a conditional statement. The way that we write it, um, this where it says if P then Q is P with an arrow towards Q. Okay, so when you see this P arrow Q, that means if P then Q. This is probably one of the most used can, um, statements that is in programming, um, in spreadsheets, different things like that. I use this a ton. And um, this is, so as we go through these examples, I'm going to tell you how I use these conditional statements and different things um, in a lot of the different settings that I have been in. So let's look at an example. Um, oh, first of all, the P is called the antecedent. The Q is called the consequent. So the P is what comes before. The Q is what comes afterwards. So let's look at this example. P, we're gonna let P be the statement, you come to church tomorrow. And Q is gonna be the statement, I will take you to lunch on Monday. So the antecedent is you come to church tomorrow. The consequent is I will take you to lunch on Monday. Now, just like we developed um, the and and the or statements, I'm gonna give you some um, examples with some sentences to develop this truth table to try to help you understand where it comes from. So let's just say that um, if, if you come to church tomorrow, um, I will take you to lunch on Monday. And that's like a promise that I'm making to you. And as long as I don't break that promise, so as long as I follow through with my promise, then the statement is true. If I don't follow through with a promise, then it's false, okay? So as long as I don't break my promise, then the statement is true. Okay, so the first one is, if you come to church tomorrow, then I will take you to lunch tomorrow, or lunch on Monday. So 
P we're going to say is true, that you come to church tomorrow. And Q is also true. So that's our first. Our P's and Q's, remember, is the same every single time. Those two columns are always going to be the same in every single truth table. So if you come to church tomorrow, then I will take you to lunch on Monday. That is going to be a true statement. Okay, I followed through with my promise and I didn't break it. All right, now let's see what happens whenever you don't come or I don't follow through with my promise. Okay, let's see what happens with that. If you come to church tomorrow, then I will not take you to lunch on Monday. So the Q is false. Well, then P implies Q. Um, if P then Q is false. All right. So that's a false statement. Now, what happens if we start out and we say, if you do not come to church tomorrow, then I will take you to lunch on Monday. All right, so that's where we have a false antecedent and a true consequent. Well, let's think about that for a second. So my promise to you was that I would take you to lunch on Monday. So I actually still followed up on my promise, even though you didn't come to church. So I still followed up on my end of the deal. So this is actually a true statement because I still came through with my promise. Okay. Then the last statement is if you do not come to church tomorrow, then I will not take you to lunch on Monday. So that's where both of them are false. Now this one is really a weird thought, but if you really think about it, I did not break my promise um, on this at all because um, you didn't come to church and I didn't take you to lunch. So I didn't break my promise. So it's actually a true statement as well because I never broke my promise. So the only time that this is um, false, it's true all the time, the only time it's false is if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. Okay, so this is going to be another truth table, um, this right here, that we're going to use as a reference, just like our and and or. So we're going to need to have this one as a reference as well for um, if, p, then q. All right. Here's an example about, you have several of these on your homework where it'll say construct a truth table for the given statement. So this one doesn't look quite as ugly as the other one, but it involves, um, it involves the if then truth table. So here we have um, if P then Q or P. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, um, I went ahead and did our P's and Q's. And then we're going to do um, if P then Q. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here to my chart. I put our charts here. We're going to use the if then chart and we're going to use the or chart because we have an or. So I copied them up here for our reference. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy this um, column right over here. All right. So it's false only whenever in that second case where you have true, false, false. Every other time it's true, okay? So then the next step is to do an or with P. All right, so here's my P column. And this is why you always have your P's and Q's listed. So here's my P column. Remember, what am I going to do? because my brain can't handle having, because I need my P's on the right side and I can't handle having it way over here. So I'm going to rewrite my P's right over here, okay? So there's my P's in order right over here. So when I do that, then I will use my OR chart 
and I'm going to go to my OR chart and let's look at what my OR chart, how it is special. It is special that it is only false when both of them are false. Okay, so I need to look for two falses and look for that. Two falses. No two falses. So you know what? Every single one of these are going to be true. So all of them are true. So when I finish this truth table, no matter what, how you start out with P's and Q's in every situation, this right here is going to end up being a true statement. Okay, so that is how you would answer this question and how you would do all of these types of questions. Now, conditional statements um, can have different translations, and so I said here that they can have many disguises. All of the following statements have the same meaning, and so I wanted you to kind of see um, how some of these would be written, and because you're going to be asked to reword some of these things on your homework, but um, so I wanted to kind of give you that. So here you have an example. If you are 25 or older, then you can drive the church van. Well, I could also say that same statement, you can drive the church van if you are 25 or older. It's just another way of saying the same thing. You could also say you are 25 or older only if you can drive the church van. Doesn't it, I mean, that doesn't really um, sound like it's the same, but in mathematical terminology, um, it's okay. And then all 25 year olds can drive the church van. Now we know for sure in church life, this is not true, right? Um, because we know all 25 year olds cannot drive the church van. That is a big no, no. The deacons will have a um, heart attack over that little statement. So just strike it from your memory. You never heard that here, but in mathematical language, that's okay. So just using this as an example. But um, anyway, now, how is this going to look on your homework? Okay, so let's look at how this is going to look on your homework. Okay, so I copied that same, um, that same chart, and then you have different um, examples like this, where it'll say, translate the sentence into if-then form. And they give you an example like this one where it says all nursery workers must have a background check. OK, so they want you to rewrite that sentence, but they want it in if then form. So what you're going to have to do is use this chart, which is in your text, or you can just use it off of your notes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look and we've got to figure out which one of these conditional statements to use. So I'm going to go to this particular statement and I'm going to try to figure out what is P and what is Q. So all nursery workers, I'm going to divide it up into two parts, two statements. That is going to be my P and then must have a background check is going to be my Q. So because of this keyword all, I look and I see where this last example uses all. And so if this is, um, that's my example that I'm going off of, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, how does this sentence relate to this sentence? So all 25 year olds can drive the church van is the same as if you are 25 or older, then you can drive the church van. Okay, all nursery workers must have a background check. So we can rewrite that as, so all 25 year olds, if you are 25 or older. So all nursery workers, if you are a nursery worker, we, that's how we could rewrite that, right? So if you are a nursery worker, um, and then it says you can drive the church van, you can drive the church van, um, you must have a background check. 
Well, that we can just rewrite the same, right? You, then you must have a background check. So if P, then Q. Okay, that makes sense. You just want to ask yourself, does it make sense? And a lot of these are going to be in multiple choice format, but you have like a lot of multiple choices. So your, your five is going to run out, you know, so just know that. So you really are going to have to um, know what you're picking here. But this is how you use this chart to help you to know what you're doing. All right, that's how all of those work. We also have a few related statements of the conditional statement. And so these are called the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. Um, so these are kind of more definitions and you're gonna have a few homework problems that are going to have you practice making the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. So um, I've given you a statement here. If you have been a church member for a year, then you can serve on a committee. OK, so um, if so, we have the if P then Q. So if you have been a church member for a year, that's our P, then you can serve on a committee is our Q. Now, the converse of that statement would be the opposite, which would be if Q, then P. So the way that we would write that is if you can serve on a committee, then you have been a church member for a year. So it's the opposite, okay? So you kind of put, you just put it in opposite order. Now the inverse is not P, if not P, then not Q. So how that would sound is if you have not been a church member for a year, so that's if not P, then you cannot serve on a committee. Okay, and then you have the contrapositive, and the contrapositive is not Q, if not Q, then not P. If you cannot serve on a committee, then you have not been a church member for a year. Okay, so that is how we rewrite all of these using the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. Now, you have to be very careful, okay? Because it's very, you're very quick to think that a statement and all of their related statements are equivalent or they're the same, but they're not. Not all of them are. Sometimes it depends on the statement. For example, let's take this statement. If it is a hymn, it is a song. This is a simple statement, okay? So if P, then Q. If it's a hymn, it is a song. Let's consider the converse of that. If it's a song, then it's a hymn. Well, that's not even true, is it? You know, if it's a song, then no, <laughs> it's not a hymn. So, I mean, you know, that's just a really simple, quick example where to show you that the converse is not always the same as the statement, you know, the conditional statement. So you just have to be careful, but there is one thing that you can bank on. The conditional and the contrapositive are always equivalent, okay? And so if you need to make an, a statement, this contrapositive statement and the original P, if P, then Q, they are always going to be the same. So that is a law. And so those two are going to be the same. They mean the same thing always. So that's like a mathematical law. You really don't want to see the proof of that. It's like long and really hard, but just take my word for it. All right. In these last few examples, um, I'm going to show you these, I, I've taken some of these from some different examples of where I have used these types of, um, these types of examples in my ministry settings over the years. And if you have ever had to use a spreadsheet or 
wanted to know how to use a spreadsheet or had to keep up with a list, a long list of people. And you're going to see like, you know, if you've had to keep up with a list, this is one about youth going to camp or children going to camp. Um, and you're just gonna see where it can be valuable. Um, it is it is really amazing how much time it can save you if you know how to put in some formulas. And so this is where some of these mathematical formulas, every computer has a spreadsheet program on it. And I have people all the time that are asking, that ask me, I wish I knew how to use a spreadsheet. And then if they know how to use a spreadsheet, they'll say, I don't know how to use those little formulas. Well, this is the basis of these formulas. And, and I can tell you that once I started learning how to use these formulas, and these are the basis of those formulas, then it opened up worlds of opportunities and it made my life so much easier and even led to lots of jobs that um, paid me lots of money, made me very marketable. And so, um, you know, it's just, this is, it, and it helps you in your ministry. It um, is huge time saving. And so anyway, this is one of the ways that I can tell you it is very helpful for you to learn some of these things. Um, it can help you in ministry. All right, translate the following statement into symbolic form. We're going to let C be the statement you have a child going to camp, D is going to be the statement you have paid your deposit, and N is the statement you enter your child's name. Okay, so here's the statement. The statement is, if you have a child going to camp and you have not paid your deposit, enter your child's name. Okay, so you're, you have several homework problems where it'll say, translate the following statement into symbolic form. And then they'll give you, they'll give you this CD in, and then they'll give you the statement. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these different parts and we're gonna match them up to these statements. So if you have a child going to camp, all right, this is almost verbatim, you have a child going to camp, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put a C out next to that because that matches up with that. All right, now the next one is you have not paid your deposit. Well, D is you have paid your deposit. So this is you have not paid your deposit. So out next to this, I'm going to put, I'm not gonna put D, I'm gonna put not D, okay? I'm going to notice that these things are combined with an and, all right? Then the next thing is enter your child's name. You enter the child's name. That is exactly what N is, okay? So that is an action that you are going to do. So this is like an if you do this and this, then you need to do this, okay? So I need to wrap my mind around what does this look like? You have to do two things, and when you do those two things, then you do this last thing, okay? So I need to do, if you do this and this, you have to do both of them. Then you do this, all right? So let's talk about this and this. How do we say C and not D? Well, we just write it. You put it in parentheses. We're gonna say C and not D. It's not rocket science, just like you say it. How do you say C and not D? Well, you just put it in math terms, C and not D. Okay, so if you have C and not D, then what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to enter your child's name. And that is N. How do we write that? We just write it with an arrow. So this is actually not that hard. So if C and not D, then 
you enter your child's name. So this whole entire statement right here is summed up in this one little bitty mathematical statement. This is the formula that would help me to know what to do like in a spreadsheet and I could use columns and different things. You could have a hundred people's names and in a matter of seconds your computer can calculate everything for you and you wouldn't have to spend hours and hours um, calculating deposits and different things like that for you. It would do it all for you and you wouldn't have any mistakes. And so um, if that's something you're interested in learning more about, I would be more than happy to um, kind of help you and share different things on these things as well. So this particular example came from a mission trip that um, we took a couple of years ago and it became so detailed to try to keep all of the records and of course I'm keeping those records and it was just a lot and so I had very detailed spreadsheets and so this was one of the examples um, of something that I ended up putting into a spreadsheet. So translate the following statement into symbolic form. So we're going to let T be you're going on the mission trip, S is you're a senior adult, P you're staying in a private room, A you're going to the ARC, M you want the meal plan, and D you will pay $662. Now here is the statement. The cost of the mission trip for a non-senior adult staying in a private room with a ticket to the ARC, which does not include the meal plan, is $662. Okay, so that's a lot. I mean, a lot. And so there's a lot going into that. So we're going to try to match up all of these different parts to these different statements. So we're going to do just like we did last time. And we are going to go through each of these different parts. The first one is the, we have to get you on the mission trip first. Okay, so um, we have to get you going on the mission trip. So we're going to make, um, make that you are going on the mission trip. So let's let that be T. Then for a non-senior adult, Okay, well that has to do with this. This says a senior adult. So how am I going to write a non-senior adult? What do you think? So instead of S, what am I going to write? I'm going to write not S. Okay, all right. So then the next part says you're staying in a private room. So this says you're staying in a private room. So we get to leave that as P. Okay, good. With a ticket to the ARC, you are going to the ARC. Good. So we can leave that as, what letter is that? That's A. So we can leave that as A. Um, does not include the meal plan. So this um, does not include the meal plan. Up here it says you want the meal plan. So how am I going to put this if it does not include the meal plan? This is not M. Okay. And then finally $662. You pay $662. So that is the cost. And that is D. Okay, so now let's wrap our minds around all of these different things. So first of all, you are going on the mission trip and you are not a senior adult and you are staying in a private room and you are going to the ARC and you are not going to have a meal plan all of those all of those things are going to happen then you're going to pay six hundred and sixty two dollars so just like last time we have like a whole bunch of ands it, all of these things are going to be combined with and and then when all of that happens then we're going to have d 
okay? So the first part is that we're gonna combine all of these letters with ands. So that's gonna be T and not S and P and A and not M, okay? If all of those are true, then you are going to pay $662. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so um, that is going to be very, um, you're going to have several on your homework assignment where you are going to be picking these statements out and they're going to be just kind of uh, detailed like this. So I wanted you to have some good examples um, like this uh, in, in the notes. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me as always and reach out to your instructor. Um, and please don't get too bogged down in this. Take your time as you work through these truth tables and um, make sure that you're checking your work. So that will definitely um, help you as you move through this section. Thanks so much.